Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL Part 3, Setting Up a Development Environment. In previous videos, we've learned about some of the core concepts required for rendering three-dimensional graphics. We've learned a little bit about how the GPU pipeline works. In this video, we're going to set up some software we're going to need to actually implement some of that theoretical information. In particular, we're going to talk about installing Python uh, with a couple things we need to pay particular attention to. We need to make sure we add it to the path correctly. When we want to install it for all users, that'll make our setup a little bit easier. We'll also learn about IDLE, the Integrated Development and Learning Environment, which Python provides with us when we install it. We'll also need to use some Python packages. These are special libraries which provide added functionality on top of the core Python libraries. And we'll see how to install them from the command prompt or from PowerShell using a program called pip. And then finally, we'll talk about a different development environment, which is highly recommended, called Sublime Text. You're welcome to use any development environment you wish, but this is a particularly useful one to use. So first, let's head over to the Python website at python.org. So here we are, uh, python.org. I'm going to go ahead and download Python. Since I'm using a Windows PC, it automatically detects that, and it provides me a link to download for Windows from Python 3.8.5. I'll go ahead and download that. I'll save that. Now I'll go ahead and run this. Uh, I'd like to run it as an administrator so I can install it for all users. So I'll go ahead and press install. Uh, one thing I want to be very careful about down here at the bottom, uh, this is unchecked for some reason, but where it says add Python, in my case 3.8 to path, I want to go ahead and check that box. And I'd also like to do a customized installation. If I don't do it, it's just going to install it for myself, but I really like to install it for everyone. So I'll click on Customize Installation. Let's see, I want to install pip. Right, and this I want to install for all users. Make sure that is checked, and then click on Next. And again, under Advanced Options, I'm going to check on Install for All Users. Notice that it will cause it to install to a different path and it will require uh, administrator level privileges. Right, so this is installing. Maybe I'll pause so you don't have to watch this. And through the magic of video editing, it's now complete. Setup was successful. I can go ahead and close. Now with Python comes a program called idle. And idle is kind of a, like a simple, bare-bones Python editor. So we can go ahead and start that right up. And you'll see a window like this. Let's make this a little bit smaller. All right. And this is the interactive Python shell, where you can just get a feeling for the Python language and type in commands, which will be immediately uh, performed for you. So for example, I could type in uh, one, two, three, plus uh, 214, and that'll immediately tell me the answer is 337. Or I can traditionally say print, left parenthesis, quotation marks, hello world. And sure enough, it will print that character string for me. So idle is a fine little editor. Uh, if you want to actually write a program and save it and run it at a later time, you can, within the shell, you can say file, create a new file, and then type in some number of commands. So maybe I'll say print have a nice day. Now I'll go ahead and save this file, or module, as it's often called. Call that test. And now I can click on run in the taskbar and say run this module. Module is like a file containing some code. And then it'll tell me here's the file that I ran and it will print out the results down here. 
So that's the idle Python editor. It's pretty useful. However, uh, to develop a more advanced project, uh, we're going to worry about something or learn about something called Sublime Text in a minute. But before we even get to that, we're going to additionally want to install some extra packages. In Python, a package refers to some kind of a software library that provides extra functionality. And we're going to import a few. Uh, one of them is called Pygame, which will help us create Windows. Another package called NumPy, which we can use for advanced mathematical calculations. And one called PyOpenGL. And we'll use that one for uh, interfacing with the GPU. It's the Python binding to OpenGL. Now in order to install these packages, we're going to use something, the Python installation program called pip. Now to run pip, I actually need to get to either the command prompt or PowerShell on Windows. On Mac is going to be a little bit different. But I want to get to one of those programs, and I'd like to run it, again, with administrator-level privileges. So when I install something on the computer, I'd really like it to be available for all users. So I can go and start up one of those. I think I'll go start PowerShell. So here I have Python, not Python, I have PowerShell up and running. And again, I've started it with administrator privileges. In Windows 10, you can uh, go to the Start menu and right-click the icon for PowerShell and then choose run as administrator. And the command is going to be, at least on Windows computers, uh, pi-m. I'm going to run pip install. And then I just type the names of all the different libraries I'd like to install. So I want to install pygame. I want to install numpy. I want to install Pi open GL. The capitalization is important there. And uh, there's a special library which can speed it up. Uh, Pi open GL underscore accelerate. All right. I'll hit enter. Oh, and I have actually already installed these from an earlier system. So that's great. That's the command you will need to run. And once that runs, uh, it'll collect the libraries and it will see that everything's installed. Uh, to actually check your installation, you can actually go back to the idle window. Right? I'm going back to the idle shell window. And you can check to see if something's installed by trying to import the corresponding libraries. Right? So just to make sure that uh, everything's been installed correctly, You'll want to shut down idle and then restart idle. And then type import, for example, import pygame. And if pygame is installed correctly, you should get a nice little message. It says something along the lines of the pygame version which was installed, and hello from the pygame community. So we'll do that for each one of the libraries just to make sure. Um, the next library is uh, I want to try to import I-M-P-O-R-T numpy. Uh, if you import numpy, it just it doesn't give you any message. In this case, no news is good news. Right? If you try to import something which doesn't exist, like for instance, numpy, right, you'll get some kind of an error message. But we know numpy is imported correctly because in this case we actually get no message. To check the pyopengl installation to make sure that package is running correctly, uh, you would type, uh, actually just import OpenGL. PyOpenGL, remember, that's a binding of Python to OpenGL. You get access to all the OpenGL functions through this namespace. So if we just type import OpenGL and get no message, then the installation is great. All right. So at this point, uh, hopefully you've been able to install Python. You've been able to use the command prompt or PowerShell to install some packages. And we've checked to make sure that they all work. Um, the last step is optional, but highly recommended using a kind of a different development environment to run some programs. The one I like to use is called Sublime Text. So I'll go to sublimetext.com. A uh, free trial version is available, but I highly recommend you purchase it because it's a, it's a really good piece of software. But again, the trial version is also fully functional. 
uh, Sublime Text. Let's see, I'll open up my version of Sublime Text right here. Uh, this can integrate with all sorts of different programming languages. At first, it kind of looks like maybe a, a notepad style editor. But you can also do things like you can have a directory of all the different files you're working on. Um, I'm going to create a simple file. Uh, uh, testing Python installation. All right, so I'm just going to write a little bit of code here. All right, and this is Python code, but at first the Sublime Text program does not recognize it as Python code until you actually save it as a Python file, meaning with a .py extension. So I'll go ahead and save this to the desktop, call it test. Oops, I, I need to not call it test, I need to save it as uh, maybe test.py. And then the first thing you might notice is that suddenly you get syntax highlighting. Right? The commands are colored one color, strings are colored one color. You know, if I were to write uh, variables or commands, right, all things get different colors, which is really nice. But the really great thing is if earlier, when you installed Python, you installed it for all users, if you did that correctly, then Sublime Text will also be able to run programs for you directly from the editor. So unlike Idle, where you kind of have to manage two windows, the editor window and the shell window, here, uh, you can do everything in kind of the same place. So once I've got my Python file open, I can go to Tools and Build, and it should automatically uh, build it with Python, and it'll run it. It'll pop open kind of a console window down here where it'll print the results. And here I can just easily um, say you know, x equals 2 plus 3, print x. And I can save my file, and I can just go ahead and build it again. Hit Control B. Right, so you don't have to navigate between different windows. Another great thing about Sublime Text, I love the line numbering. And if you create a new file, you don't have to juggle multiple windows. You can have the files open right next to each other. I can say print another test. And I'll save this as test2. Uh, sometimes, if you have more than one file and you want to kind of compare them side by side, uh, you can also change the layout. Underneath View, you can have, for example, a two-column layout, and then drag one tab into the other side. So that also can be helpful. There's, there's all sorts of great features that Sublime Text has. So, again, highly recommended as a development environment, and that's what you'll see me using as we go through and we start to build our graphics framework in Python and OpenGL. So hopefully we are now set up and ready to go, if not with Sublime Text, then with the development editor of your choice. In the next video, we're going to start writing some code to create our first window using the Pygame library.